Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Tyrone back with Tech Life. And in this video, I wanted to give you guys my recap on T-Mobile's quarterly earnings yesterday, give you guys my key takeaways, and then speak on what's next to come for T-Mobile in the next couple of quarters. So, again, great quarter for T-Mobile. There's no other way to put it. They beat all the estimates in the market. I'm sure this I haven't checked it yet, but I'm sure the stock's gonna gonna be up. They rebounded yesterday. There was a there was a loss in this in the uh, in the stock. Then it rebounded after hours, and I'm sure today it's gonna exceed and excel. So what's the what's the secret recipe, so to speak, that T Mobile is, is able to grow in the market, stay competitive, and still maintain to invest a decent amount in the network? Well, one, the synergies are helping. So essentially, how, they, how they're how they funding the network with the synergies, they just combined the T-Mobile standalone CapEx and the Sprint standalone CapEx, and they combined it. And they're operating that very disciplined. They're not spending a single dollar outside of those synergies. So they're not taking free cash flow and are increasing the capex so they're a very well-run disciplined company they've stated that multiple times whereas verizon their business is structured different they're higher on revenue way more profits so of course they can take 10 billion out of the free cash flow and and drop it on on c-band and that's something that verizon discussed that if they feel that one of their five vectors of growth is set to exceed and help the company grow in another segment potentially or gain revenue and profits then they will invest to boost that section and they're doing just that they see that c-band can lead to many more opportunities and fixed wireless and 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 wire and, and boost the wireless performance and get going in 5g so they're taking 10 billion out of the free cash flow and they're putting it towards that t-mobile is disciplined they could also do that they could increase capex two to three billion and, and use that cash flow but they're very disciplined and they want to fund the network off of the synergies so again 12 billion over the next 24 months they're already well into the first first year of the 12 billion we're now almost halfway through and then it goes to nine to ten billion and starting in 23 all the way to 26. We haven't seen guidance beyond 26, but CapEx seem to remain around that 9 to 10 billion mark, which is well within their means, well within the synergies. So they're not operating outside that. So kudos to them. Great quarter. Again, they beat all the estimates. They beat revenue. And whatever the market says that they would do, they beat it. The market estimated them to gain around 452,000. They did 773,000. They beat it. How did they get there? We can debate about that all day long. Free lines, free lines, free lines. T-Mobile is a well-run company. They've they've been in the game for a long time. They operated very similar during the LTE era. If free lines benefits them, then they're going to continue doing that. If maybe retention offers are baked into that so it, it doesn't affect the company, we don't know, but there's in in that case there has to be a method to that madness. It has to be because if not, they're they're operating at a loss and it just wouldn't work well. So Mike Sievert said yesterday during the earnings call, the free lines, it's not really materially hurting the company at all. And if that's, he says, if that's what the competition in Verizon and AT&T thinks is helping them grow, then they got another thing coming. That's... That's kind of not word for word, but that's what he said during pretty much said during the earnings call. So again, T-Mobile is strong. They're funding the network very disciplined. They're not spending buku amounts of money on on just, you know, getting the network accelerated. They're spending well within their means and it seems to be working for them. Again, their business is structured in a different way versus Verizon. What brings in profits and makes money for T-Mobile is likely not going to make money and profits for Verizon. Verizon is structured differently. They're more lucrative. Their 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 money is they they spend way more money than than T-Mobile, but they also their 
the stuff that they do costs more money versus T-Mobile. So they have to cut those non-profitable lines and and customers to, to grow revenue. And Verizon is doing just that. Their financials are great. They're making big profits, big revenues, and they're funding the network. And T-Mobile, again, is structured differently. What, what they're doing now and how it's structured is making them money and profits. They're growing by volume. That's why the ARPU, people say, is not a, it's not a big deal. $47.30, but they, they have volume. They have huge volumes. So the ARPU is fine, many say, and I, and I tend to agree. But one thing that they did talk about during the earnings call, that that $47.30 uh, mark that ARPU is at now, it will, that will be the lowest that we see it this year. So they anticipate ARPU growing in Q2, Q3, Q4. So that's some of the numbers that we've seen is likely still an after effect of the merger and them not fully having the systems integrated and the Sprint customer base migrated. So I wouldn't be 100% set on those numbers because those numbers will fluctuate and they'll change and they'll get better. So they'll, they're, they're still working through the, through the Sprint base. They're trying to still lower the Sprint churn, by, which, by the way, has not changed much, so it's still fairly high. They did this, uh, talk about that very briefly. So they're still having to work that sprint churn and get it get it lower. That's going to be a tall task. I think they get there, but they're going to lose a good amount of sprint customers in the process. So those are kind of my key takeaways. They did talk about network leadership in three years overall, biggest network. Uh, that's that's far fetched. I mean, they're gonna really have to spend big money to to catch up to the AT and T's and Verizons of the world. I mean, AT and T had specific funding reimbursement subsidies from the government to build FirstNet. T Mobile doesn't have that doesn't have that type of uh, funding to build sites. So if they do expand, it'll be by okay. We're gonna add one site and we're gonna we're gonna let it go 10 20 30 miles whereas AT&T and Verizon have sufficiently built sites every 5 or 6 miles or so along that same stretch and they'll likely perform better so there's a there's a there's two things so there's there's coverage expansion which T-Mobile could do you know they build a very tall site they put all their low band on it their mid band and then they just they just push the site as far as it can go but then there's also quality of that coverage the quality of service how good is that service if you push the signal 10, 20 miles and you're on one bar pretty much for a good amount of st a stretch when Verizon and AT&T have sites after sites after sites? That's going to be another, th uh, of course, that's another topic for another video, but I've seen it in the past where they've done that during LTE and then calls were choppy, they dropped, data was so-so. So there's... You know, there's there's trade-offs in, in, in this case. 10,000 sites going into rural America, I applaud them. That's going to be big. Regardless of, you know, if the coverage is good or not or, or if it's performing well, they will have coverage there now in, in these areas. Will they be able to densify that coverage and make it better quality? That will likely happen in the future. But for now, they just want to get their footprint in the door and and be able to be able to offer home internet services in these rural areas and be able to provide a retail presence and then of course coverage footprint for these coverage uh, for these people in rural America. So so what's next for T-Mobile? That's the the second part of the video. What do I anticipate happening in in the second quarter, third quarter, fourth quarter? One, they have momentum. They didn't really lose the momentum. The pandemic kind of slowed them down. But they're anticipating the second half of the year to pick back up to somewhat normal levels. That means more people are back at work, the economy is better, and there's more cash going around. Be besides what we just kind of witnessed in Q1, we had tax returns, we had stimulus checks, so there was there was money in the in the in the market. The economy was was just for that amount of time a little healthier, so. That's why Mike Sievert stated that as AT&T and Verizon thought mid-quarter, they were getting more aggressive and more competitive. 
it was just really their growth just really came from the the economy getting that that cash infusion so to speak whether that's true or not you know that's T-Mobile is always perception versus reality a lot of the times. That remains to be seen, but he did have a point. I mean, there were a lot of people that had more cash on hand than usual. You know, if you combine the tax return and the stimulus, some people had up to two, three thousand dollars in their account. So of course they're going to spend it. So Q2, Q3, Q4 is going to look a lot different, but as volumes go back to normal, Again, T-Mobile is structured to take the lion's share of the growth. If it's a mute switching environment, if it's if it's low volume, mid volume, high volume, whatever, T-Mobile is positioned to grow big. If it's if it's the free lines, if it's the the phone promotions, whatever it is, they spent a lot of money to acquire a customer. They're pretty much paying you to join them. And now they're saying the net that consumers and businesses are choosing them for network. It changes the dynamic now. Now they're growing with value, but they're also able to give you a network, a solid network that might, you know, when they say we had the best LT network and we're going to have the best network and largest network, that's all debatable. It's area dependent, but on the larger scale nationwide, they likely did not have the best network. But again, it's perception versus reality, and T-Mobile is the best at it. Their marketing is going to get better. As the network, the product becomes better, they will get more aggressive. They will start knocking on big Fortune 500 companies' uh, doors, like I mentioned in previous videos. They will go to the airlines and say, hey, try my network. This is the deal. You get seven months free if you switch to us. They're going to they're gonna work that section very, very, very aggressive. So again, I predict quarter two, three, and four is going to, it's, it's, it's in favor of T-Mobile's growth because that's the way they're structured. They're going to make profits. They're saying the ARPU is going to go up. The ARPU at $47.30, it's the lowest it's going to be this year. That means profits are going to go up. The Sprint migration is ongoing. They're at 50% usage now. They have 50% of the Sprint customer that's using the T-Mobile network in some way shape or form whether it's tnx or roaming or they're utilizing that network so they're going to shift more of that sprint spectrum onto t-mobile and from what i'm being told it's more aggressive now so that's pcs that's being that's being transferred more band 41 uh bandwidth is being opened up on n41 and the the sprint sites are being converted over to with t-mobile equipment so the densification from that will come as well that will accelerate in the second half of the year. The, the CDMA shut off on the site per site basis is happening as well. So they're in full they're in full synergy mode. The 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 funding is coming from that, as I mentioned. They're very disciplined on it, and they're gonna do big, big numbers going forward. And also, just to throw this in really quickly, at their current growth trajectory, if Verizon continues to be at lower volumes, I've discussed this with a couple of people last night. T-Mobile is now a real threat to surpass Verizon in the number one overall in, in postpaid subs, subscribers. They're now a real th threat. It's not going to happen in six months or a year, but if the numbers stay the way they are and T-Mobile continues with the momentum, in two to three years, they could surpass Verizon to become the number one postpaid by subscribers company. So let me know what you think about that in the comment section down below. Look forward to reading your comments. If you have been on the channel or you are new to the channel and you have not yet liked, shared, subscribed, make sure you do so. Hit the notification bell so you are notified when I do upload content. Make sure to follow my social media outlets for more updates and interactions. Thanks again for watching. This is Tyrone with Tech Life, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.